Just in case you missed it somehow, 1994 was a pretty big year for games on the Super Nintendo, and some genuinely legendary titles all launched at about the same time. Donkey Kong Country, Final Fantasy VI, or III depending on how you want to refer to it, and Super Metroid, just to name a few. Another interesting game that came out that year was Demon's Crest. You could argue that this was intended to be a sequel too, the third and sadly final entry in the Gargoyles Quest series. Now, just like those other titles I mentioned, this game took the franchise in a new direction pretty significantly, both in terms of gameplay and storyline. But what makes it really interesting to me and worthy of another look is the fact that apparently it was so reviled for its demonic theme and characters, it actually rustled the jimmies of some religious groups. Because nobody likes a pissing match more than religious fundamentalists, at one point the game was supposedly purchased en masse and returned immediately just to prove a point, resulting in at least one week of actual negative sales. If you know me at all, you know I love a good controversy when it comes to games. So let's take a little deeper look and see if we can figure out why Capcom left this franchise behind and what exactly got these people so fussy about it in the first place. Nintendo Video Games Murray made with my money Gargoyles Quest series launched in 1990 as a spin-off itself from Capcom's Ghosts and Goblins series. The first game came out on the Game Boy, and in 1992 the NES saw a sequel in the form of Gargoyles Quest 2. Both of these featured Firebrand as the protagonist. He was an enemy you face in G&G who didn't play a huge role, though he was one of the more frustrating enemies you face due to his erratic flying and penchant for showing up at the worst possible moments. Interestingly, both of these games have their own unique storylines where Firebrand's going through some different challenges to accomplish different goals, but they don't really tie in too much to one another aside from some game mechanics. As for what got the religious right all up in arms about this, I think that part's pretty clear. I mean, the issue is basically right there in the title. Demon's Crest is a game about demons in a demon world doing demon things. Evidently that was enough for some groups to coordinate a massive purchase and return plan for this game to prove a point. I don't really know what that point proves, but it certainly adds a little mystique to this title and it's worth noting that while this all comes from rumors and one issue of Nintendo Power, it's part of the game's lore. And really, not that many games ever saw actual negative sales back in the day. It might not be the best claim to fame you could ask for, but hey, it's something. Demon's Quest also has some pretty detailed story behind it, which is unique for what's otherwise a pretty straightforward platformer. The story behind Demon's Crest is actually a little deeper than you might think. Long ago, the world was divided into two realms, one for the humans and the other for the demons. There were six magical stones that fell down into the demon's realm one day, each inscribed with a different crest. Fire, earth, air, water, time, and heaven. Now, demons being well, demons, they started fighting amongst themselves for control of these crests, and a big old demon civil war broke out. This is where our protagonist Firebrand comes in. Evidently, he wanted to stop all this infighting and was pretty savvy on having all these crests for himself, so he managed to get five of them collected. But being a greedy demon, Firebrand really wants to collect the whole set and picks a fight with the demon dragon for the crest of heaven. It was a long and fierce battle, but Big Red came out on top with all the crests. Uh, not before getting his ass pretty close to kicked. So when he flew away, beaten and weakened, our villain Phalanx came along, knocked Firebrand out, and took the stones for himself. He's a dirty rotten cheater though, and he's not super good at finishing what he starts because Firebrand survives. Well, mostly. Also, one shard of the Firecrest actually managed to stay with Firebrand, so when he was cast away in the Colosseum where he fought the dragon, Phalanx couldn't control the whole universe without it. But that didn't stop him from trying. Once fully healed and super pissed off no doubt, our boy Firebrand is off to find Phalanx and collect all the rest of the shards of the Firecrest as well as the others to exact sweet revenge on his rival. As he goes about his journey, he goes through several different realms and faces a number of different bosses, gaining crests as he defeats them. First you face Salumo, the zombie version of the dragon that almost killed you. There's also Belth, the boss of the graveyard, on Vunu, who guards the area beneath the graveyard, Flame Lord, who spends his time burning up the forest, Skula, an unpleasant little sea creature who guards the underwater area, Crawler, who's basically just a collection of dead body parts, Flyer, an annoying skeleton dragonfly, Holothurian, which is a giant underwater sea slug, and Greywan, a glowing and very angry ghost wolf. There are also some recurring enemies like Phalanx's own General Arma, and you can't forget the Hippogriff, who never really gets quite killed it seems. Anyhow, get through all these and you're ready to face off with your arch rival Phalanx. Now in terms of the story, this is where things get a little interesting. There are actually several possible endings. In the first, Phalanx knows he's about to be defeated, so he seals himself inside the last crest and Firebrand flies off to bury the remaining ones and feels like he got his revenge. 
Nobody ends up the supreme ruler of the demon realm, but you still get what you wanted. In the second ending, also known as the bad ending, Firebrand destroys Phalanx when he wasn't expecting it, so he never gets to fully realize his powers. Firebrand gets his revenge, but since the king was apparently not defeated the right way, the demon realm falls into chaos. I kinda assumed a demon realm and chaos would always go hand in hand anyway, but I don't know, what do I know from demons? In the real ending, at least the one you get when you collect everything in the game, defeating Phalanx isn't really the end. Firebrand now has all the crests, and he sits and thinks about what to do for a bit. He decides that being the supreme ultimate ruler isn't his bag, so he just chucks the crests off a cliff. Now you get to play a new stage, but with the power of the ultimate gargoyle. If you get through this and defeat the dark demon who'd been residing in the human realm, you realize you never needed the crests for your power at all, and you still chuck them off a mountain. Then you head off to the demon realm to find a new warrior to battle. Personally, I've seen enough games that finish with the live to find a greater challenge trope to fill a lifetime, but the general consensus is the longest ending is also the best one. That's really up to you, I guess. The gameplay is really something else in this game. Personally, there were some parts I really enjoyed, and some I found a little more annoying than fun, but I think this is up to the player's preferences, and there is a lot to it. In terms of controls, things change based on which power or form you select in the game's pause menu, which is also where you can select which potions, spells, or talismans you want to use at any moment. Because you end up needing a combination of many of these things at different points to get through these levels, you're gonna spend some time on this menu just switching back and forth between forms over and over, which I think kind of breaks up the immersion, but maybe I'm just being picky. Near the end of this game, I was hitting pause so many times in each level I started to wonder if anyone actually tested this game up before releasing it at all. For powers, you start off with the Fire Breath, which comes from the one shard of the Fire Crest you have at the start of the game. The rest of that shard's abilities are the Buster, allowing you to destroy stones, Tornado, which creates little stepping platforms, Claw, which allows you to climb walls, and the Demon Fire, which is just a higher powered fire breath. Getting the other crests also gives you new abilities and some pretty sweet new forms too. The Earth Crest, that's the ground gargoyle, allows you to shoulder blast objects and move things around, though you cannot fly in this form. The Air Crest, or Aerial Gargoyle, allows you to fly vertically and horizontally, and also to cut vines that you're going to run into in different levels. The Water Crest gives you the Tidal Gargoyle and lets you go underwater without taking damage. You can also shoot out blasts while submerged, which can destroy obstacles, but it's not a lot of use on dry land. The Time Crest is the last one you get in the normal game, which reduces your damage by about half and gives you really powerful blasts. Plus, you get to call yourself the Legendary Gargoyle, which I think is pretty neat. If you end up collecting all the items in the game, you get the best ending, and in the final stage, you basically have all the powers from before combined. And this bad boy is called the Ultimate Gargoyle. Another important item to be aware of, though, is the Talismans. You actually get a heads up on these being in the game only one place, which is the main town you usually visit right as you get into things. The problem with the Talismans is they're hidden. So if you decided not to talk to that particular shopkeeper, you might not even know they were there. That's another thing to stop you from getting the final ending to the game, too. And it's not just the levels you'll visit in this one. There are also places like the town and the small shops for potions and spells, and one particularly interesting set of locations where you play bonus games for money. Now, I know some people find these fun and generally easy, and maybe it's just something with how I play games, I'm willing to admit that. But once you get past the first few of these, they get really difficult to beat because you're basically just headbutting obstacles within a certain amount of time to win. And you need to do this if you want that special ending, because on top of collecting all the vellums and all the flasks and all the talismans, I'm fairly certain you also need to get all the health containers to do that, and one of them is behind this bonus level. And honestly, this is one of the things I found a little weird with this game. They went through all the effort of creating these separate endings, and I'd imagine they really wanted you to see them, but they never really tell you about the things you need to do to get there. In fact, aside from things on the world map being numbered, there isn't a whole lot of guidance at all on what you should be doing at any given moment. That said, looking at the game as a whole, I think the gameplay is pretty good and it offers a lot of variety. And the bosses are generally pretty unique, certainly some of them are challenging, and the game is never really too slow unless you intentionally take your time. Hell, you even start the game off with a boss fight. It's ambitious, but appreciated. I don't know exactly what to say about the music in this game. You can tell they put a decent amount of time into it, and to a certain degree it fits the overall motif of things, being in a demon realm and all. I mean, you kinda expect pipe organs here and there. That's not what you get. No, you get pipe organs pretty much all the time. It's like a non-stop Catholic mass in this game. Okay, maybe not that depressing, but it definitely could have been a little more lively in my opinion. Not saying it was a bad soundtrack overall, but things start to feel a bit drony after a while, and it is noticeable. 
The graphics, though? Well, for SNES games, the designs in Demon's Crest were pretty fantastic. Each level feels unique and has a strong mood to it, and the backgrounds are really deep. I love when a game that stems from earlier titles levels up the designs, and if you've played any of the Gargoyles Quest games, you'll appreciate the upgrade. The designs for the different forms are pretty cool, and a lot of the enemies look intimidating in their own right, but it's the bosses that really set things apart. They're not all created equal though. Most of the main game bosses are creepy amalgamations of parts, which does the trick for sure, but in my opinion, the first boss you fight is the most intimidating, and you beat him with basically no powers at all. The one real issue I had was with the final boss, Phalanx. At least, until you get to his final form, he's really just like a tall gargoyle in fantastic shape. That's not all that scary, but I'm guessing they were trying to lull you into thinking the fight was easy until he reaches his final incarnation, which isn't really scary either as much as it's super annoying and difficult, but hey, it's the final boss. What are you going to do? Generally speaking, the graphics were ahead of their time, and I think they add a ton of value to the game. The music? Eh, not so much, but every game has its flaws, right? Well, I think we've learned something today. First off, if you really want to piss off religious wingnuts and stir up some controversy, at least in the mid-90s, a game about a demon fighting other demons to be the ultimate boss demon is a good way to go. Also, Demon's Crest is a good example of how a legendary video game company like Capcom can make an arguably great game tied to a franchise that, while sometimes frustrating, also has a ton of clout, and still manage to get left off of some of the greatest hits lists. And though it's kind of sad that this was the last real effort to keep a side character turned anti-hero like Firebrand alive, it's definitely one of the better games to come to the SNES. I highly suggest giving it a play. If nothing else, you can tell all the little old ladies at church about it and get them all riled up. That's part of the fun of this game, right? Well, thanks for watching. See you next time.